Proudly, we hail. New York City, where the American stage begins. Here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Army. Our story today is entitled, The Nice Quiet Weekend, and is a tale of suspense and adventure that begins when two soldiers head off for a weekend pass. A weekend pass that involves a blonde, a long sports car, and a murder. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first, high school seniors, here's an important message for you. The United States Army's Reserve for You program will guarantee you a classroom seat in an exciting Army technical career course before you enlist. You'll get top-notch training, on-the-job experience, while serving side-by-side -side with America's finest young men. The choice is wide open, and it's yours to make. High school graduates can choose from more than 100 interesting career courses that range from atomic technician through welding. A fact-filled booklet called Reserve for You tells you about the entire program. Get in on the swing. Get your free copy of Reserve for You by visiting or writing your nearest United States Army recruiting station. And now your United States Army presents the proudly we hail production, The Nice Quiet Weekend. <laughs> I want to tell you about a certain weekend. The one my buddy Bert Maney always calls the uh, nice, quiet weekend. Me? My name's Chuck Christie, Sergeant Christie, United States Army. Bert and I are both stationed at Fort Dix, New Jersey, as cadre men. Uh, for the benefit of civilians, that means instructor. For the benefit of soldiers, it means a pretty good deal all around. Uh, but to get back to the weekend, uh, we had a pass and we were headed north, barreling along the New Jersey turnpike with the throttle of Bert's jalopy wide open. In Bert's jalopy, that means we were doing a snappy 50 miles an hour and watching the trucks and the little old lady drivers zoom past us in the fast lane. Now, I'm telling you, Chuck, someday I'm going to get me a car that will at least go as fast as the speed limit. What's the rush? I thought we were going to relax this weekend. Okay, so I'll spend my whole pass on this turnpike. Maybe I did you dirt. Hmm? How do you mean? Dividing you up to my folks' place. You'd rather be knocking around New York, wouldn't you? No, not me. I do that every time I get a pass. No, sir. This time I'm taking it easy. Home cooking, quiet house in the country, folks like my own back home. <laughs> hey, uh, Chuck, you're sure it's all right with your people? Well, they invited you, didn't they? Well, I just wanted to make hey, sure Hey, Bert, that... look out! What? Hey. Why, you dumb dame! Ooh, cutting me off like that. Some people think they own the road just because they can drive a fancy sports hey, car. Hey, did you get a good look at her? Who? The girl driving that car? Oh, some dick. Well, I'm sorry. I was too busy keeping her from killing us. Yeah, she was all right. Uh-uh-uh-uh. Down, boy, down. You leave that stuff to your Uncle Bert. Okay, but there's one even a chaser like you won't catch. She was doing at least 90, and she's out of sight already. Yeah, out of sight, but not out of mind, huh? My boy, I'm big weekend, not me. <laughs> Beginning, although we didn't realize it at the time. About five minutes later, we pulled into one of those service areas along the turnpike to have a cup of coffee. As we drove into the parking area... Hey, here's a space. Hey, Bert, Bert, look there. Where? Hmm? It's her car, the sports car. Well, what do you know? It must be fate. Well, laugh if you want to, but you didn't get a good look at her. <laughs> I did. Yeah, it's a snappy-looking car, I'll say that. As for the girl, I... Oh, my, my. What's the matter? Oh, look, coming this way. Hey, that's Ooh. the girl. What did I tell you? Isn't she something? Oh, Junior, I salute your taste. Shut up, she'll hear you. Hmm. Well, back to work. Where do you think you're going? 
Who, me? We stopped here for coffee. Sergeant Christie, sometimes I think you've got the soul of an MP. Okay, we'll have our coffee. We went into the restaurant, had our cup of coffee, and by the time we came out, we'd almost forgotten about the girl. Uh, almost, that is, until we started to stroll over to Bert's car. How about a cigarette, Chuck? Don't mind if I do. I'm asking, not offering. Yeah, I might have known. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, here they are. Oh, thanks. I left mine in the car. Uh, say, don't look now, but where is the car? Huh? It's gone. We parked it there next to the sports car, didn't we? Oh, we sure did. Come on. It's gone all right. How'd they do it? You've got the keys, haven't you? No, like a darn fool, I left them in the ignition. Oh, fine. Obviously the work of an idiot. Two cars with the keys in the ignition, and they steal my car instead of this one. Wait, you mean to say she left her keys, too? Yeah, look for yourself. Well, be Bert, do you know what's happened? Yeah, sure. We just became a couple of foot soldiers. No, no, she swapped cars with us. Oh, you're not. Am I? She was walking over here when we were going to the restaurant. Oh. She drove away in something, and it sure wasn't her own car. Oh, now, look, blonde or no blonde, nobody could be that dumb. I couldn't give away my heap, and this dreamboat here must be worth 4,000 bucks. Just the same, that's what happened. She took our car and left hers. Hey... You think this car's hot or something? Well, I know one way to find out. Oh, I can read your mind, but we're not driving away in this car. Well, maybe you're not, but I am. Well, you coming? And Chuck, if this car's hot, there'll be an alarm out. When we stop to pay our toll, they'll pick us up. What then? We explain that. what happened, that's all. What can we lose? Our weekend pass, our good duty at Fort Dix, our stripes. Uh, shall I go on? If you feel like walking, it's okay with me. I'm finishing the trip in this car. Oh, okay. Okay, you win. But we'd better have a good story ready when we hit that toll gate. As it turned out, we didn't need the story when we hit the toll gate. Every time we passed a police car, I had to resist the impulse to throw up my hands and agree to go quietly. But no one paid the slightest attention to us, and we made it all the way home. The next morning after breakfast, Bert and I went out to the curb where the car was parked as though drawn by a magnet. Well, it's still there. Did you expect the good fairy to snatch it back during the night? Well, what are we going to do with it, Bert? Oh, now we ask. Why didn't you think of that when you insisted on taking it? We've got to get it back to her some way and find your car. I suppose we could trace a license number. Well, what good will that do if it's a stolen car? Hey, how about the glove compartment? Maybe there are some uh, papers or something. Well, we could look. Whew. It's a woman's car, all right. This thing's almost as full of junk as a pocketbook. Well, empty it out. Let's see what we can find. Uh-oh. What'd you find? We've been underestimating this babe. A gun? Yeah. Hey. It's been fired, too. I can't understand it. She looks so young and... Uh, well, so young. Well, maybe she's a juvenile delinquent who signed up for a second hit. I'm glad you think this is funny. I don't. I'm sorry. I didn't know you cared. Hey, look, I think this might be... It is! The car registration. Well, who does it belong to? Uh, Beth Gardner, age 20, height 5'2", weight 104, eyes blue, hair blonde, sex female. Oh, that's her. Hey, wait, now, here's the address. What? Yeah, it's less than 10 miles from here. Oh, practically the girl next door. Well, come on. Where are you going? To return her car, of course. Oh, now, hold it. If we take this car any place, we'll take it to the police. No, sure. And what are we going to tell them? That a girl insisted on trading her $4,000 sports car for your jalopy? Chuck, what about this gun? I'd like to hear her explanation of that. Oh, I'd like to hear her explanation to a lot of things. Okay, then. We've got the address. What are we waiting for? Oh, I can just hear myself in front of the court-martial board now. It was all my buddy's idea, Colonel. Honest. I just went along for the ride. <laughs> okay, drive on. <laughs> Let's see now, uh, 623, must be in the next block. Hey, there she is. The girl, where? No, no, my jalopy. Look, parked right up there. Hey, that's it, that's her house. I'll pull up right behind. Well, don't just sit there. I'm coming. Get that gun out of sight. Oh, sorry, General, any further orders? Knock it off, will you? 
Hey, it's a nice looking little shack. I wonder if she lives alone. She must be home with the car parked outside. Hey, uh, Chuck, how do we open the conversation? Shall I say, uh, Miss, uh, would you like to buy a hot pistol? We'll keep that gun out of sight until we're ready for it. <laughs> okay, okay. Shh, shh, shh. Here she comes. Yes? Uh, Miss Gardner? Who are you? The United States Army. What? Uh, my buddy's a comedian. My name is Sergeant <laughs> Chuck Christie. He's Sergeant Bert Maney. Charmed. What is it you want? We brought back your car. We'd like to get ours. Oh. Oh, yes. I, I, just a minute. I'll get the key. Uh, uh, hold it a minute. Don't you think we have an explanation coming to us? I'll get you the keys, Sergeant. Oh, man, have you ever got her twisted around your little finger? Never mind. I'm not leaving without the explanation. Oh, sure, sure. Here are the keys. May I have mine? Oh, certainly. Uh, that is, as soon as we get that explanation. I don't think I owe anyone an explanation. Now, Sergeant, may I have my keys? You stole our car on the turnpike yesterday. Well, I left you mine. It was more than a fair exchange. Oh, sure. Now I have to waste a couple of hours of my pass getting it back to you. The least you can do is tell me why you took our car. I'm sorry. I, I can't do that. Now, will you give me my keys, or do you want me to telephone the police? Now, that's the best idea anybody's had yet. Then I could get rid of this. Well, what are you doing with that gun? Oh, no, 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 no. That's our question. What were you doing with it? We found it in your car, and, uh, and it's been fired. Give me that. No, thanks. Uh, uh, we don't want it fired again. All right, keep it. It isn't mine anyway. You fired it, though, didn't you? I never saw it before. Well, I can tell about that from the fingerprints. Fingerprints? Don't you ever listen to crime shows on the radio? Now, would you like to call the police? Come in. Well, that's more like it. Come on, Bert. Hey. It's a nice place you have here. Sit down, please. Is your family at home? No. Mother and Dad are away for the weekend. That's how I... What do you want from me? Oh, just an explanation, that's all. Then what? If the explanation doesn't suit, we take the gun to the police. I see. Well, we can all save a lot of time by going to the police right now. Oh, we're in no hurry to go to them. Suppose you tell us why you swapped cars. Because I'm in desperate trouble. What kind of trouble? I... You'd better tell us. We may be able to help you. No one can help me. I might feel better, though, if I get it off my mind. We're listening. Well, there was a man named Tim Bryan, an important man. At least I thought he was important. Mother and Dad didn't like him, and they finally said I was never to see him again. When they went away for the weekend, he dropped by and wanted to take me dancing down at the shore. Oh, I was bored, and, well, I accepted. We went down in my car, and we danced for a while, and... Then he took me to meet a friend of his, a man who had a small place down there. I began to get worried by then, especially when the friend left to buy us something to eat, according to him. I didn't like being there alone with Tim, and I told him so. Where do you think you're going, baby? Out. We've been here long enough. Hey, now, wait a minute. We can't run out on Marty. Please, I want to go. You'll think we're nuts. He went out to get us something to eat. I don't care. I want to leave now. Why did you lock the door? Relax, Beth, baby. I just don't want you running out. Marty'd be hurt if he came back and found you gone. Tim, Brian, you unlock that door. I want to go home right now. Maybe I can change your mind. Come here. You let me go. Let <laughs> How dare you kiss me? <laughs> How dare you? How corny can you get? Now, you're a big girl, Beth. You came down here with your eyes open. They're open now. I want to get out of Why here. Why don't you get really dramatic? Look. <gasps> what, are you, what are you doing with a gun? I thought you'd want to defend your honor with it. <laughs> and what's the matter? I want to go home. Don't want the gun? Okay, we'll play it straight then. <gasps> I've changed my mind. Oh, come on now. Put the gun down. is isn't loaded anyway. Isn't it? Now, wait a minute, baby. Don't do anything foolish. I warn you, don't come any closer. I want the key. Now, look, you better let me have that rod. Stay away from me. Come on now, give that to me. No, don't. Keep away, don't. Give me that. No, no. Oh. Baby. Baby. Oh, no. Oh, no, Tim, I didn't mean it. I didn't, Tim. 
What am I, what am I going to do? The, the key. Oh, where is it? Oh, here. I've got to get out of here. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean to kill him. I didn't even know I still had the gun in my hand until I got into the car. After that, I, I don't really remember what happened. I must have driven around all night. Then sometime yesterday, I, I decided to get home and try to think what to do. What about our car on the turnpike? I stopped at the service area for gas when I, I spotted this man, Marty. I had the wild idea he'd been following me. I saw your car next to mine with a key in the ignition. I took it. Now you know everything. Oh, you mean now we've heard everything. We start out for a nice, quiet weekend, and we wind up as accessories to a murder. Listening to the proudly we hail production, The Nice Quiet Weekend. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. High school seniors, ensure a secure, well paying future by preparing for it now. The United States Army's Reserved for You program will guarantee you a classroom seat in an exciting Army technical career course before you enlist. You'll get top notch training and on the job experience while serving side by side with America's finest young men and women. The choice is wide open, and it's all yours to make. High school graduates can take their choice of from more than 100 interesting courses. Everything from atomic technician to welding. The fact-filled booklet, Reserved for You, tells you all about this program. You'll learn of many other fine Army benefits, too, like regular pay increases, promotions, exciting travel assignments, and unbeatable leisure time activities. Get in on the swing. Get your free copy of Reserved for You by visiting or writing your nearest United States Army recruiting station. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now we present the second act of The Nice Quiet Weekend. This was a development for you. Here were Bert and I sitting in an expensively furnished house listening to a beautiful girl confess to a murder. To tell you the truth, none of us knew what to do next. We just sat there until the silence was shattered by the ringing of the telephone. You better answer it. Suppose it's the police. Don't say a word until you've talked to a lawyer. A lawyer can't help me now. Hello? That you, Beth? Who, who is it? Marty. You sound surprised to hear me. No, I'm not. Who is it? Marty. The man who owned the place down at the shore. Hello. You still there, Beth? Talk to him, see what he wants. Yes, I'm still here. Good. You know, kid, I got quite a job when I came back to the shack and found you know what. Well, what do you want with me? I want to help you, kid. What'd you think? How can you help me? I already helped you. Did you look at the morning paper? Is it... is it in the paper? Uh-uh. That's just the point. You seem like such a nice kid to me, I figured you must have had a good reason for what you did. You didn't report it? Better than that. I've got it doped out so that it never gets reported. But that's impossible. Nothing's impossible if you know your way around. Now, there's just one thing. Yes? A fix like this is expensive. I need some working capital. Oh. What do you want? Money. Of course. Agree with him. Promise anything he asks. But I... Don't argue. Hello. Hello, you still there? Y yes, I'm here. We gotta work fast, you know. All right. Uh, I'm ready. What do you need? Oh, about three grand. We'll stand them off for a while. Three thousand? But that's so much. This ain't exactly a speed and ticket. I'll fix it. Can you get it to me today? But it's Sunday. The bank's closed. What kind of cash have you got around the house? Well, no more than two hundred dollars. Bring it. What about jewelry? A diamond bracelet, maybe? 
I have an emerald ring that's quite valuable. Bring that. It'll do as a down payment. All right. Where do you want me to go? My cottage. You know the way. No, not there. Tell him yes. It's okay. Body's gone. When do you want me to come? Right away. If you leave now, uh, you can make it in an hour and a half. All right, I'll be there. Well? I'm to go to the cottage and bring my emerald ring. Good, we'll drive you down. We? Oui. But he's expecting me alone. Naturally. But Marty sounds like the top who likes surprises. We'll give him one. What's the matter with you, Bert? You haven't opened your mouth since we hit the turnpike. Oh, my first sergeant told me there'd be weekends like this. I should have listened to him. I feel awful about this. I should never have dragged you into my troubles. Well, I uh, never contradict the lady. Chuck, I want you to turn the car around right now. I'm not going to let you two get involved. Sorry, we're not allowed to turn around on the turnpike. Well, sure. <laughs> do you want to get us into trouble? Besides, I don't know what Marty will do when he sees me show up with two soldiers. Guarantee you one thing, he won't go to the police. Then... And what will he do? We'll worry about that when we get there. I hate to put things off. If you don't mind, I'll start worrying now. Well, you won't have to worry long, Bert. We should be there in another 15 minutes. Well, nice to be right about one thing, anyhow. We were there in another 15 minutes. Marty's cottage was about 100 feet back from one of the main highways that lead to the ocean. As we pulled up and stopped, things looked pretty quiet around the place. Is this the right place? Looks deserted. I'll knock at the door. You and Bert can wait here, Chuck. Spoil the surprise? Come on, Bert. Okay, uh, but this time I'm taking the car keys. Yeah. Go on, knock. You made good time, kid. I... Where did the soldiers come from? From Fort Dix, pal. Do you mind if we come in and set a spell? Get lost. That's what I like. Good old-fashioned hospitality. After you, Beth. Hey, it's a nice little place you have here. Reminds me of an orderly room in Dix. Okay, smart boys. What's the big idea? Oh, Marty, that's the very thing we want to know. Why'd you bring these guys here? They'll explain it themselves, Marty. Okay, then, you two. Start explaining. Know something, Bert? I get the distinct impression that Marty doesn't like us. That's funny. I felt that, too. Uh, what we're trying to say, Marty, is that uh, as a host, you lack a certain something. I heard yeah. enough out of you. Get out of here. But then that may be due to the fact that you aren't really the host. Tim Bryant rented this place, didn't he? Chuck, be careful. What do you know about Tim? Enough to know he's the brains of your little partnership. One look at you is enough to tell me that you couldn't be. Okay, I've had enough. When you brought these two jokers along, you loused up the whole deal. Now you face the rap alone. Oh, Chuck, I told you. Take it you. easy, Beth. Marty, you mentioned a rap. What would that be? Tim Bryan is dead and she killed him. How, scare him to death? Shot him to death. Right through the heart with a 45 slug. Now, for all I care, she can fry for it. Oh. Show him the gun, Bert. Is this the gun she used? Let's see that. Give it to him, Bert. It's empty. Yeah, be my guest. Yeah, that's the rod. The one she must have used. Oh, don't worry. I carry a permit for it. Oh, I wasn't worried about you, Marty. I was worried about poor Tim. He must have been in awful shape to die of a wound from a forty-five blank. Blank? Take a look in the barrel of that gun. I did. A bullet going through there would have cleaned it out. That gun hasn't fired anything but a blank in some time. Hey, you're a pretty smart kid, aren't you? Well, I've learned a little bit about guns in the Army, that's all. Chuck, what does this mean? It means if Tim Bryan's dead right now, it must have been due to natural causes. Then, then I didn't shoot him? Right. But then why A they... blackmail racket. They staged a phony murder and hoped to make you pay for it the rest of your life. All right, I've heard enough. Tim! Keep your hands inside, all of you. This gun isn't loaded with blanks. Hey, Chuck, maybe you were wrong about the blank. From the looks of this character, he could be a zombie. Go ahead, boys. Laugh it up while you can. We've got to get out of here, Tim. How far would we get with these three yelling their heads off for help? We'll, we'll tie him up. That'll give us a couple hours' start. Not enough. My next conviction is for life. I'm playing this all the way. Don't be a dope, Tim. This will mean a chair. If I'm caught, I don't expect to be. You wouldn't kill us, Tim. You couldn't do a thing like that. Not in cold Save blood. Save the crocodile tears, baby. If that gun had been loaded the other night, you'd have killed me quick enough. Okay, out of the house, all three of you. March. Where are you taking them, Tim? The field's about a half a mile down this road. It's too close to the highway here. Come on, march. Oh, Chuck, I'm scared. Steady, they haven't done anything yet. Move. You, uh, 
want to make us walk? No, we haven't got time for that. Walk over to your car. That's it. You get in first, kid. All right. Quick, Marty, just get the whole neighborhood down on our necks. Lift up the hood, break the wire. Right. Watch his eyes, Bert, when he looks toward Marty. Got gotcha. you. Hurry up. I can't find the catch on his hood. Now. Hey. Give me that gun. You get it. Right over there. Thanks for the arm. My arm. You broke it. Jack, I got Marty down over here. How's yours? I broke his little arm. Oh, thank goodness you're both safe. Well, you're thanking things, honey. Thank the science of judo. That's one of the things Chuck and I teach down at Fort Dix. Wouldn't have done us much good if that horn hadn't short-circuited when it did. Yeah. That was the miracle we needed. Miracle, my eye. That horn went off because I stuck a bobby pin in it. What? I know a few tricks myself. <laughs> Ten more miles and we're back at Dix. Just in time, too. What are you grinning about, Bert? <laughs> Our nice, quiet weekend. Home cooking, nice, quiet house. <laughs> what was all that stuff I said? Oh, I'm sorry, but how did I know it was going to turn out that way? <laughs> That's okay, Chuck. Don't apologize. Only if we can wangle a pass next weekend, you can come with me. I'll show you the kind of excitement that I really like. No, thanks, Bert. I, uh, I can't make it. Can't make it? Why not? Now, before we say goodbye, Beth and I cooked up a little date for next weekend. Both days. You'll have to go on your own. No comment. Career-minded young men and women, now is the time to check on the Army's new Reserved for You technical training program. In it, you can choose from 87 outstanding courses and have a reserved seat in the school you've selected before you enlist. For complete information, visit your nearest United States Army recruiting station or put your name and address on a postcard and mail it to RPC, Governor's Island, New York 4, New York. That's RPC, Governor's Island, New York 4, New York. And we'll be very glad to send you no obligation in the mail a free copy of our little booklet called Reserved for You. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail. Presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Army. And this is Mark Hamilton speaking. Inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>